man. Special birthday edition, dog. The day of real one birthday. What we doing, man? I want to play some music, but I know YouTube going to be hating. <laughs> but, but YouTube don't be want to monetize nothing, boy. Copyright. <laughs> Bro, they got a rule now on YouTube. You can't even cuss like the first 30 seconds. Are you serious? Yes. Oh, wow. It will not be monetized, my guy. Oh, wow. Yeah, I done got to the point like, I don't mean like cutting no more, because they might end. Because I feel like, because you know, Facebook be strict like that, too. Yeah. So, certain thing, I want to put clips on there to get monetized. And sometimes I got to go back and, you know, add a little beep, beep. <laughs> so, I'm to the point, bro, I'm just start telling everybody, hey, look, that don't need cut, bro. Don't cut. Nah, man. nah, nah. <laughs> Oh, what you got, my boy? Oh, what you got, man? Man, you heard that new Smokey Robinson album, though, bro? No, man. Hey, <laughs> boy, Smokey Robinson probably got the most horniest rollout of all time, bro. You heard about the album, right? Got, got some? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I ain't, I ain't heard too much about it, but. You know. <laughs> Why Smokey so honey now? That nigga, nigga more got a little Cialis plug over there. I don't know, man. <laughs> you know? Hey, <laughs> I, I ain't gonna lie. That'll probably be like, Smokey Robinson be a cool ass granddad. Probably. I mean, he got a story, man. Yeah, I, I seen the one where he said uh, he was on another show and he was like, man, I couldn't stand drinking. I used to like weed, but he was saying like he used to smoke Primo, like he used to put cocaine in the blunt. I was like, whoa. Smokey was partying, partying, boy. Smokey was Smokey, apparently, man. <laughs> I wasn't really surprised because Smokey used to hang with Rick James. So, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cause, like, uh, it, you know. Yeah, you hang with Rick James, man. You kind of like, you outside for real. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be you real. all the way out there. <laughs> like, for real, bro. Uh, man. Man, what you think the uh What you think, old, how the old women gonna react at the shows? I don't even know, bro. I, <laughs> I'm not too informed. Like, I, I don't even... Bro. I don't know, man. But, I mean, if they fans, they fans. I think, like, you know, one of the... the the beauties of, of creating artists are like when people value it, they're gonna rock with you forever. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So the fans gonna love it because yeah. they fans. You know what I'm saying? No matter how old he get, yeah. you're gonna have a certain core that's gonna rock with him. You know what I mean? Like, well, uh, how you feel if you chilling, head to the family barbecue, catching a vibe, mm -hmm. middle of the summer, just enjoying yourself? Got out of a relationship about six months ago with the love of your life. Okay. You blew it. She ain't never coming back. You been trying to get her back. Hard as hell. Pull her to the barbecue. See your granddad smoking Robinson pull up in the cabin. You know he in the Cadillac. Mm -hmm. How about the passenger? It's the girl that got away. <laughs> will you be hurt or will you hate? Will you take? Will you just take it and keep it moving? Or will you hate on your granddad smoking? Hey, uh, is it hate if I react? How's that hate? It kind of hate me. How you reacting though? It don't matter how wise he went. <laughs> See, what? Oh nah, nigga, you hate. <laughs> oh, it's hate. It's hate. How's that hate? How does that make sense? Cause she go, she you moved on. Oh, it's a dub, bro. I'm so you gonna cut I'm up? Gonna, I'm gonna go about my business. Yeah, I've been broke up six months, though. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going about business. So, I, uh, I ain't never talking with none of them again, either. You ain't going to talk to your granddad no, no more? No. I'm talking about he going to be there, like, he going to be just violating the two. Like, slap her on the booty in your face. Ah, yeah. grand, grandson. Man, it's over with, man. <laughs> yeah, I ain't going to lie, boy. I'm going to be hurt, too. Uh, well, I'm so, uh, the, the next day, what's up, grand? No, man. <laughs> just there, your granddad, though, man. Oh, it's his grandson. Hell, man, don't do granddaddy like that, man. Nah, nah you wildin', bro. <laughs> you wildin', bro. <laughs> what? Like, 
like the love of my life. The love of your yeah, life. Come on, bro. You Y'all about to get married. Logically, like, no, man. And she was like, you know, like, the it chick don't never be on the same type of time with you that she was, is going to be on with the new dude, too. Like, with you, she always was like, oh, I don't do that. I don't do this. But with the new nigga, like, she a whole nother person. Like she, like, she had, like, a whole church girl with you, but she get with that new nigga. She turned to a porn star for some reason. Listen, man, that's none of my business, bro. <laughs> At that point, that's none of my business, man. Hey, you can't be real, though. You hating on your granddaddy, but you can't be real, I though. I just don't think that's hating, to be honest with you. All. <laughs> who you, all right, so who you gonna have a problem with, your granddaddy or her? My granddaddy. He don't know this, your girl. You ain't say that. <laughs> That's a big factor, bro. Yeah, I think. Like, you and probably, if it's the love of my life. Oh, yeah. She probably didn't meddle, huh? Bro, what you mean? Yeah, she, probably, she, yeah, she definitely came to the Yeah, yeah bro, so she know like, it's your girl. Yeah. He know bro, it's your girl. Bro, if you don't, bro, come on, man. <laughs> Damn, Smokey. Yeah, more to the story is, man, y'all keep y'all girl away from Smokey Robinson, man. <laughs> Cause Smokey on Demon Time, my hill. <laughs> Smokey, like, he pulling. Hey, I'm talking about Smokey outside, too. Like, he pulling up at all the red carpet events. Uh, shout out to Smokey. Man, man, shout out to Smokey, man. Shout out to Smokey, man. Like, for real, though, man. That's a legend, regardless of anything. Yeah, man. And shout out to. Man, we got some. I don't know about got, that, brother. You got. <laughs> you, hey, I mean. We got some great music. To each his own, you know well, what I'm saying? Well, the thing about the music he gave us. Gave yeah, was super free. Uh, look, I'm not, I'm not going to say you're wrong. I'm just not gonna shout it out. Gave yeah, was the whole Bobby Brown first album. Hey man, look, I'm giving a salute. Hey, listen, man. Like I said, teachers on. You're not gonna get me to jump on that boat with you, bro. Nah. <laughs> hey man, we'll listen to this show, man. If you don't, if you a child, you don't need to listen to this show anyway. This is not the show for you. But don't be. Man. But shout out to the music that <laughs> about us. Let me say that. <laughs> hey, let's go ahead and start this show, man. Check Runners Podcast start right now. Yee! Check, Check Runners. runners. Check, 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 check. Hey, hey, man. It's your kid. You, damn. Let me start over, bro. <laughs> hey, it's your favorite cousin at the cookout, Rico Ramil. Check out my brand new book, Get Rich and Praise God, man, on Amazon.com right now. Everything you need to learn how to secure that bag like a boss is right here in this book, man. I went from sleeping in the 1984 Buell Sable to living full time off the gifts I was born with. And I want to show you how to do the same thing, man. It don't matter what level you at in life. If you're ready to start chasing your dreams and actually seeing results and you're tired of just moving backwards, man, and stuck on a job that you're really not happy with, man, Go get this book right here, and it's going to give you everything you need to live the life that you deserve and secure the bag like a boss. Get rich and praise God on Amazon.com. Hey, hey, man. Welcome, welcome, welcome to a brand new episode of the biggest podcast in the world, Check Runners Podcast, baby. I am your favorite cousin at the cookout, Rico Ramirez. And if you can't tell by now, I'm country than a bowl of grits. And I love this <laughs> shit, man. <laughs> I got my personal, personal partner in the building today, man. This guy right here got some credits on his belt. This guy right here. Don't even got to audition for the roles no more. They just call them up. <laughs> Say, hey, bro, we need you. I know these 20, 30 other people are, like, trying to just send me their audition tape. But now, my guy, we need you. You're seeing them in all your favorite shows, man. 
everything from stars, hit series, BMF, to the CW hit series. Siri, this is not about you right now, baby. <laughs> See, I see it, see it just hating, bro. Like, you're going to be uh, hating on your granddad at the barbecue. Anyway. <laughs> you seen him in everything. You seen him in Black Lightning. You seen him in Netflix show Mo. Man, it, the list goes on and on and on and on, man. I got my dog in the building. The one. The only. Raphael. Castillo. Oh, that boy, that boy is the Castillo. Okay. Hey, come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. Okay. I feel like I should have had like a little bad little Dominican chick over here serving <laughs> drinks, bro. How you feeling, dog? I'm blessed, man. My life is good. I can't complain, man. I'm feeling good, man. It, it is really good. an interview because we be together like every day. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> This is a chopping it up, man. That's all it yeah, is. Yeah, man. This is a chopping it up with the record button and a, <laughs> and a little bit of monetization going on. <laughs> that little, damn. A little bit of cash in your pockets? Man, just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> but, boy, boy, had these four blowing on my phone? <laughs> man, you ever get, you ever just be chilling, bro, and somebody you ain't heard from it forever hit you to borrow some money? I think it's starting to happen more, more now, uh, and that's always funny. I got you know, you know, it's people hear about you doing something, and all of a sudden they they miss you and they talk to you in a while, and they got business ideas. And oh lord! They checking up on you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. I ain't talked to you in seven years, man. What you mean? Hold oh, on, bro. You got to give me one of the business ideas that a nigga that had. Oh, I got to hear this. That's important. All right, yeah. I think, I think you know, I've been hit up for, I think people know that I like shoes. So I've been hit up with shoe propositions a couple times. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And it's not even, I haven't been, you know. Like a sh- nigga trying to start a shoe store? Not a shoe store, but a Businesses on shoes. You know okay, I mean? okay. And I've I've been I've I've I haven't been hit with anything that doesn't make <laughs> sense yet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and it's not all. And I'm I'm be real. It's not always for people ill intentioned. Okay. Sometimes it's people giving me advice like, oh, like take the money you making and make you make more money. Okay. But sometimes it's from people that like, I know you don't care about me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You trying to use me as this vessel. You know what I mean? So it's like, I mean, that's and that's that's the way life is going to be. You got to kind of learn how to filter out who's he, who's here to help you and, and who's here with genuine intention, mm. who's here with malice and to benefit themselves only. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's just going to happen throughout all of life. You know what I mean? Nah, facts. Nah, facts. Especially as you succeed. It's... I'm going to tell you, bro, I used to be the type of person, like, I'm still a giver. I never stopped being a giver. But I seen it's gotta you gotta put a cap on your giving. Cause yeah. some people it's just never a one and done with them. They see that as oh, I can come back and get some more. Mm-hmm. Like that's what we doing. You know what I would say is I, I I wouldn't even say you have to put a cap on your giving on your giving. You have to be more cautious on who you give to. Mm, okay. You know what I'm saying? Cause there's people in my life that I'll give for the rest of my life. Mm. It doesn't matter if I get anything from them. But it's because of what they've done for me in my life. Okay. My mom can ask me for whatever she wants. Right, facts. It don't matter. I'm going to give it to her. My siblings can ask me for whatever they want. It don't matter. I'm going to give it to them. Because my entire life, my mom and my siblings have taken care of me. Mm. When I said I wanted to play football, they bought me cleats. Okay. When I said I wanted to play baseball, they bought me gloves and mm. catcher's mitt and a ca- and then all my equipment, my bat. Believed in you. They took me to practice. Okay. When I said I wanted to act, and I was working part time at Foot Locker, and my check was the amount of my class, my mom was the one paying for my class. Damn. You know what I'm saying? When I was 18, and I said, "Oh, I want to work because I don't got money in my pockets." And I was about to apply to Denny's. Mm. My brother's the one who said, "What you you trying to 
on the restaurant one day. No. And I was like, no. He was like, so why you don't work at Denny's? I was like, oh, because I need money. He was like, okay, what do you need? And so I just, just you know, so if I want to have money, and if I want to buy something, I just want to have money in my pocket. Okay, you focus on football. If you need something, let me know, if I, and I'll help you get it. Mm. If we can't get it, it's because you don't need it. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, so if for 27 years those people have taken care of me, it doesn't make sense for me to limit my giving to them. Mm. Now, the random person that I've taken a chance on who hasn't done much for me, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I give to them, and I give to them, and it seems to be a parasitic relationship. Yeah, you limit your giving to that person. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's not so much limit the amount you give, but limit and be more precise on who you give to. Mm. Damn, bro, that deep, though, bro. Man, that's a cool ass way to say nigga don't call me ass for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you a fool. Hey, man. That's, boy, that's the flyest nigga don't call me I ever heard. <laughs> nigga, like, yeah, just be careful. Just be careful. I be knowing somebody by that music on they the tone and they when it, if the tone and they voice sound like they on they like they deaf bed. Right. Hey yo, hey Rico. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> Woo It's the so, <laughs> Be like, oh like this nigga dead, ain't it? <laughs> Niggas. They about to ask they about to ask for a lump so bro, <laughs> bro, you finna die anyway. What you gonna need some money for? You finna be dead, my boy. Uh, hey man, uh, not for real, bro. Congrats on the uh, on like killing this BMF thing, man. I appreciate it, man. It, it's a, it was a wild ride, man. Uh, and it, it was something small that turned out to be a pretty a pretty dope blessing in my career, man. Mm. Did you uh, did Fifty Cent ever come to the set? Yeah, he directed um episode. He comes to set every so often, but he directed episode seven of season one. Okay. And I'm pretty sure he's he's direct he's he's directed uh episode of season two, so he he'd be around there. I think uh, he's he's very like Episode seven of season one is one of my favorite episodes. So. He's a character, like he's funny. Yeah. But also like he was giving game just out of the freedom of his heart. Like mm. advice here, like, oh yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, but, uh, like, just random. You can tell he's someone who is knowledgeable. I think uh, when you speak to him, you kind of realize, like, oh, he's successful for a reason. Mm. Is 50 Cent approachable or he, uh, he type of dude, like, man, keep these broke niggas from around me? Like, I feel like he was approachable. You Like, did you get chopped up with him one-on-one? Yeah. What you, uh, what you feel like? What gym? Did he bless you with, a, with at least one good gym? Um, I think it was just general things. Throughout the day, mm. you know what I'm saying. Like uh, I think you know specifically about you know how to take advantage of certain opportunities, learning how to market properly. Okay. You know what I'm saying when you do want to create your own project, stuff like that. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, or just you know advice on characters when we were shooting. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't say it was something like really specific. Yeah. But it was just a general day of like. You know, uh, if we were talking about something, you just drop that. You Yo. know what I mean? So you choosing 500K or dinner with 50 Cent? I'm choosing 500K, bro. <laughs> I, I hate whoever started that, Yo, little, like, that little question. Nah, because I can't even hit on it. Because when I was younger, I would, I would always be like, yeah, dinner with Jay-Z. But as an adult, I'm like, yo, like. Give me 500k. <laughs> nah, facts. <fans. laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, you can you can gain. I understand the premise of it, right? It's like you sit in the room with successful people, and you can gain, you know, game game from those people that right. can benefit you. But okay, how you gonna implement the game? <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, there you go. You get the 500 thousand. You put yourself in a position to maybe do some things that will possibly put you in that room years later yeah. and you took that 500000 You know what I mean? Right. Like, I, I don't know. I just, I understand the basis of the questions, but it's like, the only way I'm turning down 500000 is if it's 
if if it's dinner with Jesus. <laughs> yeah, nah, for real. Man. You know what I mean? Like, if it's dinner with Jesus, I'm turning down that five hundred thousand. But cause I feel like Jay Z gonna show up to the dinner, and the stuff he gonna put you on, it gonna be some. You need at least one hundred and fifty thousand to even invest. <laughs> <laughs> and you done turned down the five. It's not even that. He he's they've asked him a question. He said take. It was a thirty thousand. He said take the thirty thousand. <laughs> like what do you mean? Yeah, no, exactly. Don't come and sit and talk to me. Why? <laughs> Matter of fact. What's the guarantee that he's going to educate you? Exactly. He might be sitting on his steak like, yeah, it's a crazy day, huh? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I think we're talking about the weather. Yeah, like, yeah, you, you seen LeBron break that score right there? That's crazy, man. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work. Like, you know what I mean? What's Yo, the guarantee that this turns into a business meeting? Hey, that dope, bro, that you even, like, able to have those opportunities, man. You know, yeah. some people will dream of being, you know, in that position and playing those roles, man, and they will never see it. Yeah. You know, because that's the difference, bro. Sometimes you just, when you chosen, you already been chosen before you were born. God already said, oh, this is what I want Rafi to do. Mm -hmm. So this going to be his destiny. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's already, it's like we got, we got prepaid destinies, bro. You know what I'm saying? If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, of course. And I think, even more importantly, so it's important to recognize that as someone that is in that position. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because you can, I think that the, this industry and this journey can beat you up in so many ways that you forget to look back at the things you've accomplished, especially when you're someone who's so forward focused. You know what I'm saying? When you always think about what's next, it's like, I had to get on myself about that because I would always... I'm always someone who's thinking about what's next. Okay, how can I get here? Because I see myself at this position ultimately, yeah. and I'm not there yet. Okay. But sometimes you got to sit back and be like, yo, I've, like me personally, specifically, I chose to do this seven years ago. Within one year, I booked my first professional job. What happened in seven years ago that made you like decide, that made that decision? I uh, I had quit playing college college football. Um, I just fell out of love with the game. I remember I was having a, com a conversation with my cousin, and we were talking about doing the things we love. And he uh, he is we were talking about football. Yeah. He was like, "Yeah, man, how you feel about football?" I was like, "Yeah, I love football." He's like, "Are you really love football?" I was like, "Yeah, I love football." He was like, "If you could play in the NFL, but it was for free, would you do it?" I was like, "No." Right. Immediately, like I didn't have to think about it. I was like, "No, hey, look, you don't want football." Mm. And I was like, "Man," and I kind of, it kind of dawned upon me. It was something I was thinking about for a little while. Um, but I remember I got back to college, and I kind of made me decide I was done playing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I came back home to Miami. I probably smashed all the chicks. And mm -hmm. like, uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I came, I came, I went back home to Miami, um, and. It was kind of like a year of depression. Because, mm. like, there's the internal thing where, like, I had accomplished certain things in football that had me believing that that might have been my career. And then kind of realizing, like, oh, it wasn't my career. Yeah. And you start looking back, like, oh, you weren't even that good, to be honest. Right? Yeah. You think you were but, trash or what? I don't think I was trash. Back. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was, in, I was a Dade County All-Star. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think I was trash, but I don't think I was NFL, though. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? At, like, you, at, you at, being, most, at yeah. most, I could have walked on to a D1. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? You being real with yourself, yeah, like, though. You, you have to. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I remember I went home, but not only did I think I was destined for something great, everybody back home did. Right. So now they seeing me walk around Miami Dade campus like, well, what you doing here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you supposed to be. <laughs> so you, 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 bro, I got asked that question so many times throughout 2015. Like, hey, what are you doing here? <laughs> Why are you here? Yeah. <laughs> you supposed to be, you know, like, you got a scholarship. What are you doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, it was all a mixture of all of that that I felt like I had just failed for a year. Mm. And I remember in December, my best friend, uh, he had been talking about wanting to, you know, do comedy and, and act and all that for a year already. It had been a year of him talking about it. You know. Yeah, yeah. And I remember he was like, yo, there's this acting class 
It's this school called Miami Acting Studio, and they let you do the first class for free, which we now know is called an audit. But <laughs> I was like, oh, where? He was like, yeah, you should come with me. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. I had always had interest in acting. You right. know what I'm saying? Um, so I went, and pff, by that night, I fell in love, bro. It was it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I signed up for classes that night, and I just started Going towards it, I, I've always been someone who kind of like, I know what I want immediately, kind of, and I know that as soon as I make the decision that this is what I want to do, full force. Right. I ain't thinking about nothing else, I ain't, and that night I decided I wanted to act, so I signed up for acting classes, adjusted my work schedule to cater to those acting classes, uh, decided to study before even considering auditioning or getting an agent because another thing is that I'm the type of person that if I'm going to do something I make sure I'm pretty good at it at least at minimum pretty mm. good at it so I wasn't concerned with other people seeing me do this until I felt like I was adequate yeah. you know what I mean so I studied 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 and then uh, about three months into studying my coach moved me into his advanced classes and then about two months into that he was uh directing a feature film. He cast me in that feature film. And then I felt like, okay, if my coach is putting me in his movie, maybe I can start auditioning for his short films and everything here. Right. And then from then on, it's just, I, I was doing shorts locally. I got an agent. I auditioned. I had, I had two auditions. My first audition was for Star. It was a co-star. Your first audition? Yeah, it was. It was, it was for oh, the show starred? The show, yeah. Okay, okay. Didn't book it. My second one was for the quad. And that, that was the first job I ever booked. The quad? Yeah. Yeah, I remember you told me about the quad. Yeah. That was like, did you do a full season or just a couple episodes? I did four episodes. Man, I, was, I was only supposed to be in one. I ended up doing four. Damn, bro, that's like, but that's dope, though, to be like just starting out. No, yeah, no, nah, that's, but that's what I mean by what I talked about earlier is that, like, you got to recognize those blessings. You know what I mean? Like, if you're too forward-focused, you don't look at the fact that you've been acting for a year, booked a co-star, and that co-star turned into a recurring character. Yo. Damn. You know what I mean? Like, you got to sit in those blessings sometimes. Mm. You know what I mean? Because in, in, the, in the reality, is like, that's not common. Right. You know what I mean? I had a, I had a, a video of, of a panel that I did for BMF where I talk about 11% of actors are all working actors. That's 11% of actors who are part of the Screen Actors Guild. Actors in general, the number is probably way less. <laughs> so niggas, like, so people you see, like, on TV shows and movies, they, they probably work at, like, now, I ain't job shaming, but they probably got like regular jobs most of the time, huh? Yeah. Bro, when I was on Black Lightning, I was working at Target. Damn. <laughs> like, I would be at my morning shift on Target Tuesday nights knowing at 9 p.m. I was going to be on TV. Damn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you, it, you, you, it takes, it takes a little minute to get to a point where you can be self-sufficient on acting. On, on, what, on the money you make in acting. You know mm. what I mean? Like, it takes a minute. You know what I'm saying? Because you start off, you got to think as an actor, you're a freelance worker. Oh. Right? You're, you're, you're uh, there's a word for it. I can't, I can't think of it, but you're a freelance worker. So you, you work on the jobs you hire, you work that job and you're done. It's not a consistent influx of cash. Now, like, the, the amount you get paid is a large com in comparison to other jobs. Other jobs are more consistent, right? Yeah. So let's say I'm, I'm just starting off acting. I book my first co-star. That co-star works one day. Okay. Right? If I tell you you're going to get a job where you get $1,700 a day, you like, Pfft. but that job only works one day. Yeah. And then you're done with that job. And you might not book another job for two years. Dang. You know what I'm saying? And then, like, how it can be, like, if you're not on your grind or that's like that's just like that's just being lazy waiting on somebody to call you I think that's just I'll, don't me wrong we live we live in an era where you can create 
your own opportunities. Right. But I think if we're talking strictly like the 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 TV business, mm-hmm. it's not necessarily about being on your grind. It's not necessarily about what you're doing. I think a big part of it is luck. Mm. You know what I mean? I know some really good actors, like really good, that work really hard, that don't book often. Mm. And maybe the last job they had was five years ago. Oh. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes it ain't got nothing to do with what you're doing. Oh. This is not your time. Now, with that being said, are those people creating opportunities for themselves that make that difference? I don't know, because yeah. if you're just sitting home waiting, you might not get that chance. You might not get a chance. No. But if you sit here and say, "All right, I can't, I can't do this, but I can do that, and I can," this is still technically acting. Let me do this. Maybe the right person sees you doing that thing. No. You know what I'm saying? And you know, it's not always easy, bro. Like making movies is expensive. Yeah, I know this. You know what I'm saying? You do you you you. Let's say you like, oh, I want to do a short film. I want to produce a short film. Uh, a short film can run you fifteen to one hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and don't get me wrong, you can do it for way cheaper. You can do it off the love. Right. But sometimes the quality suffers. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. and, and I'm not, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just speaking on general terms. Yeah. You could. It, I it, I've seen short films that were done for no money, off pure connections. And love, and they came out beautifully. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that's, you gotta be A1 with your artistry. Mm, you gotta like know what you're doing. With the writing and everything. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Which, that's why your craft is so important. Mm. Because you can create something dope off of the craft. It might not look beautiful, but if the acting's good and the writing's good, it'll resonate. Mm. Speaking of some good acting, you did some good at acting in that scene in BMF with Lamar, like, that violated the hell out of your yeah. character, man. I was going to say, thank you for saying that. Because people be like, he violated you, he ain't violated me. Nah, he nah, violated he Nito. Nito yeah, took yeah. that. <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> Nito took that. <laughs> Bro, and then it's like, ever since he did that, People been living the hell out of Lamar in real life. I don't know his real name. What you know what I mean? Eric. Eric. They love the hell out of that dude. It's like after that, after mm-hmm. he like dog walk your character, mm-hmm. it's like his popularity went up. Yeah, man, because it's some savage, some savage. <laughs> like, uh, and and to be honest with you, he deserves it, man. As 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 nasty as that scene was, that was one of my favorite scenes to shoot. Yeah, what I think. Why? I mean, one, because you're working with a strong actor. And I think that's one of my favorite things to do. Work, yeah. work with a strong actor. And two, there was a lot of action there. You know what I'm saying? Right, so right. You, you get to play in a certain way. I think those two things to me, like, I don't know, I just have fun with it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I mean, you know, you on set and you know that, like, this is your last scene. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, but... It's dope to be with someone that talented and really cook and like have this moment that like I remember we shot the scene and you know he he poured it on me and it was quiet. <laughs> it was quiet, like you couldn't hear Pete. There was no production. Everybody was just like, Yeah. And I'm on the floor like holding my breath. Crafty up there setting up the tray. No, nah, nobody it, it felt like nobody was moving. Damn. So like to me I was like, Oh, we just did something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, everybody. And then the director yells, cut. And people, people are running up to me, are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm, I ain't gonna lie. I was a little disoriented. But that's because I was still in that kind of yeah. moment. But it's like, to to have a moment like that, like, I don't think you get a lot of those too often. You mm. know what I mean? And I think when you do have those moments, whether it resonates with the world or not, because you don't always know that. You know, always know what's gonna blow, what's not gonna blow. Right, right. But in that moment, I know. Okay, you did your thing. I did my thing. We just had this. I can pocket that. At least for me, I'm satisfied with the performance I put up. You ever got beat up in front of your girlfriend before? No, sir. <laughs> 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 I, 
I was sitting here, I'm thinking, cause you know how a female they'll probably look at a dude like a certain type of way and he get beat up in front of her. Yeah, yeah. I wonder how they'll feel like if you get beat up and like on like on screen and it's fake, do she still have the same energy or she like, oh my baby working hard, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, wanna... I, I, I feel like if any if the if like a, a woman sees me get beat up on a TV show and looks at me differently, that's not the woman I need to be with. Nah, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> What you like? Come on, yo. <laughs> hey, so so how far in advance do you get the script for the new episode before you film it? I think it's dependent on the project. I've had some projects where I get it like two weeks before. I have some projects where I get it like the Sunday of of the week we shooting it. Damn. You know what I'm saying? So it's dependent. Yeah, cause I know. Do you feel some type of way when you get that that new script? And it's a death scene for your character? Yeah, you feel a way. But I think, you know, what I do respect about about uh, Randy, our showrunner, is that he called me and kind of let me know ahead of time. Like, you know, and, and he was very, you know, Randy has kind of seen me grow. In, and Randy worked on the quad. Right. He was a writer on the quad, you know what I mean? So he's seen me grow, like, from the beginning to, like, to this. And I think he, uh, he, he called me. Told me he was proud of me and what what I was able to do, and he talked about how like I went had that one line. And he was like, "No, nah, we got to bring him back," and they kept giving me these opportunities, and then he let me know like, you know, oh. this, this is gonna happen next next episode. I just had to let you know because I didn't want you to open the script, read it, and find out that way. I'd rather you hear it from me personally. So I appreciate that. All right, right. But I, and, and 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 at first you feel upset, like man. Especially because I enjoyed film BMF. Like BMF is probably one of my favorite sets right. that I've worked on, um, and you know, so it, it's it hurts, but it's like, you know what? This was supposed to be one line. It's supposed to be one line. I'm in season two. Season two, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I, I ain't even gonna say, I, overstaying my welcome isn't the word that I want to use, but it's like, yo, like, you got you got what you came for and more. Mm, so right. it's either it's either be upset or be grateful. Yeah, right. And shout out to the people that I got around me, because I remember I was complaining on the phone with my homegirl, and she was like, "Well, think about it this way: it could have been a scene where Meech picks up the phone and says, oh, they got Nito.' Did At they, least I got a chance to act. Did they really? <laughs> did they? We, we really didn't get to see Nito dying though. We seen him got violated, but he. Well, I mean, I, I look, nothing is set in stone, but just based off of the view of it, you know, he was bleeding out his neck. So unless somebody called the ambulance quick, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> nigga Lamar came back in the second season and this nigga then got shot close range in the heart, the head. This nigga back the second season. Lamar is Thanos, man. Then woke up out the bed and killed the nigga. The bro, that's what threw me out. I don't know who wrote that episode. But the episode, Lamar got up out the bed. He killed the dude, the guard. It wasn't a doctor in there with him. So they ended up catching him. They brought him in there. They were trying to get him and Meese to try, try and get Meese to snitch on him. But they're like, oh, yeah, we got to let him go anyway. We ain't got nothing on him. I'm like, y'all don't remember this nigga killed somebody when he got up out the hospital because y'all thought he was dead. But... That's neither here nor there, man. <laughs> if y'all don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch the episode, bro. And it, it was a, it was an outrage on the online too a couple weeks ago. They were talking about the uh, the scene where the guy that plays uh, Meech, dad, the guy that, uh, in the character name Charles, what's his real name, bro? Uh, Russell Hornsby. Russell Hornsby. Which is shout out to him. He's a great actor, man. Really strong actor. Yo, definitely, man. He always been a dog, yeah. man. They was giving him hell. They been giving him hell for a couple things. <laughs> they been giving him hell because they called him a one minute man. Cause he had smashed, the, he had smashed the chick down the street. He came and smashed his wife. And like they gave him hell on that. Then they giving him hell about when he came in, brought the money on, brought the money in. He went out the room. Then we seen him go out the room again. Uh, I think what happened there was there's like a. I believe there's a side door mm. that goes in. So, like, imagine this is the wall. Right. This is the kitchen. 
there's a door here, cameras here. Right. Or cameras here, better said. He went here. So Bailey just went in a circle. Yeah. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the director over there, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, you can't. You got a little BMF, man. Now, you gotta give me one, bro. Give me one. Give me a good story from set. Any set that you worked on. Give me a story, bro. That is so vast, bro. <laughs> like, give me, give me a funny story from set. From any set. Or a crazy story, or or or, st- or something that happened on set that you was like, "Wow, can't believe that happened." I can't even. I haven't had any like super weird or random stories that I've uh, things of things that I've experienced on set. Really, like, no. I just think we be having fun, right? You know what I mean, like, you know. uh I know what one episode uh, when we were shooting BMF. Uh, one one of my favorite directors that I've worked with so far in my career, uh, Slick Naim. He did Mo and he did BMF. Okay. And I like working with him because he likes he keeps the energy up when mm. we shoot, right? So like I remember one time he's and he's he's getting his rap rap back too. So he came up and um you know just started playing a freestyle and started spitting. So right. We all in the circle just. Vibing out to slick spit, you know what I mean. So like, it's moments like that that you have on set. Uh, my, fa- you know, my favorite thing to do on set is I walk around with my camera and I just shoot. Right, right. You know what I mean. So a lot of the times I just be in my own world, where I will like be sitting in my chair and I'll be like, I don't want to sit here. I take out my camera and just shoot the world. And like my favorite things, I love to capture movie magic. Mm. Like how we'll be in, you know, somebody's house. But you don't know, like, it's really just a big box. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, those are things that I like to capture. So I like to explore when I'm all set. But I really be in my own world, man. And, I, and the moments that I have had, you know, I think those are those are the moments that you just keep. You know what I'm saying? You, you live in those moments. But I don't think I've, I've yet to experience anything insane. It's like, what just happened? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I think of, I, I, I consider myself to be a pretty blessed person as far as my experience on set. You know, sometimes you hear horror stories, but I feel like my sets I'm on are always dope, man. Yeah, that, that, that's a blessing, yeah, man. man. Bro, you've been heating things up over the in that country wine universe, brother. <laughs> <laughs> been getting real spicy over there. Hey, man, it's, 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 starting to, it's starting to get up there, man. <laughs> man, how you even, like, linked up with the whole Country Wayne crew anyway, dog. Well, I, uh, I shot Praise This um, a couple months ago. And uh, Mike, Mike Blesses in, in Praise This. And okay. Shout out Mike Bless. Shout out Mike. And we had a scene, a day, where we was all shooting together. Mm-hmm. So we got to intermingle that day, and, you know, kind of like uh, really meet each other. And I remember, you know, after we, this is like after we shot, 20 months after we shot, um, I was in... Baton Rouge shooting a movie, and Mike called me. He was like, "Hey, I got this, this, uh, this, you know, the Country Wayne show." I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I know." And he was like, um, I, "I want you to play my brother." And I was like, "I was as simple as that. I was like, yeah, let's do it." Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. And uh, it was supposed to be for a short amount of time, but we just been having fun with it, man. So it just kept going. You know what I mean? But that's literally how it happened. Like, just call me. Yeah. Hey, I got this concept. You know, and he explained like. What the story was gonna be, I was like, "Yeah, let's do it." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it was a lot more simple than than anything, to be honest with you. Yeah, bro, you came through the door like strong too, man. And I've been seeing um so much character development in that, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm, you giving people like layers of you that we get haven't seen before. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times. We see you playing, you know, the gangster role. Yeah. Woo, woo, woo. But now it's like we seeing some drama from you. We seeing some comedy. Yeah. Like, so, you know what I'm saying? That dope, bro. You know what I'm saying? Do you feel like 
playing those type of roles with the country wing improv skits, is it allowing you to grow as an artist? I think it's allowing me to grow because you got to be quick on your thought. Like you got to be quick on your feet when you're doing it because it's improv. You know what I'm saying? Well, uh, but what I like the most about it, and, and really the reason that I decided to keep doing it, is like you said, I'm being allowed to play things that I'm never allowed to play. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I think that uh, it, it allows, I guess, this uh, certain artistic expression that I don't get to explore. Right. Often, you know what I mean. I think, and I think it it, it allows other people to see me in a different light as well. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I love doing comedy, bro. Like my dream is to to have a single cam comedy. You know right. what I'm saying? Like I love that's my favorite genre, dramedy, single cam comedy. Those are my two favorites. You know what I mean? So like having those moments where you know I'm having a conversation with my son. Explaining why I ain't been here his whole life. Yeah. And then turning around and doing something goofy with Mike is like, right. that's that's kind of like the sweet spot. Like, mm. to me, there's nothing better than the reason I love dramedies and single camp comedies because to me, those feel like the genres that are closest to real life. Mm. Because the funny doesn't, it comes from a joke that's written, but oftentimes the funny comes from the fact that life is funny. Mm. You know what I mean? Sometimes the best jokes in single cam comedies aren't the jokes that are written. It's the coincidental things. Right. You know what I mean? It's the it's the little things. It's like, you know, uh, one of my favorite shows is Rami, right? And in the pilot, he he's, he's a Muslim. He goes to a mosque, and, you know, they have to clean themselves properly before they present themselves to God. And there's a line in the in the, in the the cleaning room, right? Oh. So he goes, he goes, Nah, that line is mad long. So he goes to the to the cleaning room downstairs. It's like a band and no one goes. He cleans his hand, cleans his cleans his ears, and is about to go. Right when he's about to go, there's an old man. It's like, nah, you got to clean yourself properly. That seems very sincere, right? right? That's life. That's a normal thing. Then the old man grabs his feet, cleans his feet, grabs his ears, cleans his ears. That's the comedy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's played serious. It's not played for a joke. But it's like, why is this man cleaning in between his toes right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, that's that's kind of what life is. And we getting that opportunity to do that with these skits. It's like, have these serious moments, but then be goofy. Right, yeah. And sometimes in the serious moments, something funny happens. Mm, facts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, it's like, you know, you, you getting a ch- I'm, I'm getting a chance to do something that I don't always do. Like... You're right. I play. I play a thug a lot, bro. You know what I mean? Right. And like, to be honest, I don't mind it. I have fun with it, but I know I'm capable of so much more. Yo. You know what I'm saying? This this is giving me the opportunity to do that. Mm. That's dope, man. Do you like the fact that you came into acting as an adult? Or if you had a chance, would you have been a child star? Because I feel like them child stars, bro. I feel like, yeah, they be getting money and they're successful at a young mm. age. But I feel like it messed their brain up. Yeah, I think, I think, man, I'm glad I started where I started. Because I think there's so much that happens in this business that can alter the way you think or influence you in a certain way that, like, when you're a child, you're very susceptible to these things. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Like, one of the biggest things, one of the biggest parts of this job is rejection. You know what I'm saying? You are rejected way more than you are accepted in this business. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, you got to think, if I audition a thousand times in one year and I book five jobs, by any other standard, that's horrible. Mm. But in this profession, you are doing amazing. Why? Because you don't see the three thousand jobs, the thousand jobs I auditioned for. You just saw me five different times on TV. Yeah. You know what I mean? Rejection is such a big thing in this in this business. On top of that, you know, it is it is based off of what you are perceived as. You know what I'm saying? And when you're young, that can affect you. Because now you feel like you got to change and be a certain way to get certain opportunities. When I came in this game, I was 20. I had some type of foundation. I had some type of security in who I was. So until someone told me, Oh, your type doesn't usually do this. I'm like, well, I'm gonna be good at it just in case I get that chance. Oh. I didn't say, oh, maybe I should like braid my hair, or, like 
You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, it, it's it, it, not even to say, Great Man, that was a horrible example. But it's to say that, like, I had a foundation and I was secure in who I was enough to not allow the things that we go through in this business change me at a core level. Mm. When you're young, I don't think that's the same. Damn. You know what I mean? So I'm sometimes I'm like, man, like I look at someone like Timothy Chalamet, and I'm like, man, I wish I would have started acting when I was young. Timothy because Chalamet, who, who, who that is and what he, what he was in? Uh, he's an actor. He's uh, around my age. He's in Doom. Okay. Um, the, the, the young man. white dude. Yeah. Yeah, he's in Doom. Or what's the other thing he was in? Young King or some somebody King. The King, I think it's just called the King. Yeah, the, yeah. the King was dope. Yeah, man. I mean, he's a, an amazing actor, but he grew up in acting. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, so you know, sometimes I'm like, and I, and I think the difference between him is that he grew up in a protected environment in acting. Like, I, I believe he was learning with his parents and stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, which is a, a safe environment to be in, but not everybody has that opportunity. You know what I mean? Not everybody. It grows up in that specific space where you're protected. Mm. And so that's why it's like he got it the right way. And that's why he is strong. And from what I know, still mentally stable. You know what I mean? But it's, I think, you know, I, I, I'm not opposed to people starting at a young age. I just think if you're going to start at a young age, whoever is responsible for that child needs to be there, be there, be there, yeah. be there. Like, be there, be there. You know what I mean? Like, it ain't no day job. And, no, like, yeah. be there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, man. That'd be sad, like, how I be seeing, like, a lot, a lot of these child stars, like, c- coming out. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And, like, how they ended up, man. Like, shit, look, look at um, Orlando Jones, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude was on Death So Raven, man. And you look at him now, you like, I think his name was Orlando Brown. Orlando Brown, yeah. Mm-hmm. Orlando Jones is mm-hmm. that, 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 the, the other dude. <laughs> Talking about on. somebody else, huh? Yeah, Orlando <laughs> Jones on Mad TV. He had a curl like, what I did? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Orlando Jones watching it like, nigga, don't even put him in. But yeah, no, nah, it's, it's important to take care of yourself, man. And also just be secure of who you are. And I think, you know, maintain that relationship with God, man. God going to take care of you, man. Mm, nah, every time, dog. Mm-hmm. Man, you see, uh, LeBron just broke Will Chamberlain. I mean, Akeem Olajuwon. Who, bro? Who, who rugged he broke? <laughs> What's up with you, bro? Who rugged he broke? <laughs> Kareem, I Kareem, broke Kareem. Yeah, Kareem. <laughs> I seen he just, he just broke that record, man. Yeah, man. Do you think LeBron the greatest player of all time? I'm gonna be honest with you. My basketball knowledge is not sufficient enough to genuinely answer that question. I I respect LeBron. I appreciate LeBron. If you ask me who my favorite player ever is, I'm probably going to say LeBron. Okay. But other people have accomplished certain things that maybe he hasn't. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I can't get mad at someone who chooses Jordan over LeBron. Jordan got six rings, six finals MVPs. Right. You know what I mean? Jordan <laughs> put up 60 while he was sick. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so it's like. Where is he sick, though? I don't know, man. I mean, semantics, bro. I don't know. <laughs> man. I don't know. Yeah, bro. I know they. I know they love to throw that out there. Yeah, man. The flu game. The flu game. What's Jordan see? You no, know, Jordan. This is what I think. What happened? Jordan had went to the club the night before. <laughs> he was like, "Man, who we playing tomorrow?" You know he don't be knowing. You know he don't look at the schedule. They, he got people. He like, "Man, who we playing tomorrow, man?" Oh, we playing. San Antonio Spurs or whoever. Ah, nah, we finna gonna turn up, man. Everything gonna me. Scotty, carry everybody bags. Come on. Scotty got everybody. Boy, you know Scotty was carrying them bags, man. Wow, bro, you wow, man. Scotty, take the bags up to to the room. Listen, I don't know what the case was, but Dennis Rodman was on side of Jordan that night. It was a Little regular typical night for Dennis Rodman. Probably one of the greatest nights of Jordan life. He like, it probably the first time he wanted to give Dennis Rodman a chance of some real friendship. Like, that dude kind of weird, but he cool. And as he was saying that, he probably looked to the side. Dennis Rodman, 
a strip of boobs or something wild or you know what I'm saying? You know, you, I want I gotta get Denny Rodman on this show. <laughs> that's gonna be a four hour conversation. Yeah, you got to. That's but anyway, a, that's a limited series. Yeah, bro, I'm telling you. But anyway, you know Jordan. He seen Dennis over there. Who <laughs> like that's Dennis. He still gonna drop twenty tomorrow. Whatever he gonna do, get 30, 40 rebounds or whatever. That thing, no Jordan looked at his watch. It was one thirty. They probably had to be at the game to warm up probably the next day, that morning by nine. He like, I'm straight. That thing, know somebody came in from another team. Matthew Johnson probably showed up that night. MJ, Matt. As as Michael, as Michael as Jordan was leaving, Michael Johnson showed up. Magic Johnson showed up. Boy, hey, early boy, what's up, boy? boy we had over to my spot. Man, I don't know, Magic boy. We got this game. Who you playing? Ah, boy, come on. Next thing you know, five hours later, that nigga might, might look at his clock, look around, everybody gone, all the teammates gone. Now he's just waking up, another wild night, cheeks in here, probably. It, it's a comfortable environment. You know a good party was going on. I don't want to get too deep in <laughs> Next thing you know, somebody called the nigga. The game about to start in 20 minutes. <laughs> Mike ain't getting no sleep. He's still drunk. <laughs> Mike, we need you, dog. Game about to start in 20. Mike showed up just in time for tip off. You ever seen five heartbeats? You know, <coughs> see, remember how Eddie Kane ran, ran on stage just in time when them dudes were chasing him about to kill him? That's how Mike came in the tip off, <laughs> sweating, you know, smelling up, up tequila, some expensive tequila. So, I, damn, damn, Mike's still playing. So, they seen him sweating. They, they seen the picture, like Scottie Pippen was like holding him, mm -hmm. and he was sweating, he sweating out all that liquor. Hold they like, man, we can't say you was drunk, Jordan. What we gonna say? He PR said say he got the flu. Oh, snapping every day. Boy, <laughs> you know they you know they hit him with the snap. He got the flu. Well let's the... say that is the case. He still put on sixty. You know what I'm saying? Hey, he did his thing though. <laughs> so but you know, I can't you know what I'm saying? Cause bro, I done had the flu before. You ain't putting no sixty. I'm not putting up two. I didn't had the flu, brother. I don't even got enough energy to go walk to the door, let alone play four quarters of basketball and drop 60, my boy. You are not going to tell me Mike had the flu in that game, man. But I feel y'all, it, it's, it, it's, it sounds better for the legacy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, it sound, it sound better, man. I wasn't there. I can't say what was, what I, wasn't. I wasn't neither, man. He put up 60, though. But you know I seen the picture. And I know the difference between flu sweat and liquor sweat. <laughs> <laughs> Mike was like, damn. Can't do that no more. <laughs> Aye, right, so you don't think LeBron is the greatest player of all time? I think he's my favorite player. I just, mm. like I said, I genuinely do not have enough basketball knowledge to answer that question. I'd be a lie if I, like, was like, yeah, he's the greatest for sure. Like, I can't, I can't name stats. I can't. Right, right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'd be a lie. <laughs> nah, facts, facts. You really, you really, it's hard to, that's kind of like a subjective question. Because it's a white guy somewhere that think, Larry Bird is the greatest player of all time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is, and there are people who think Kobe's the greatest. There are people who think Kareem's the greatest. There are people who think Wilt's the greatest. Right, right. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, I don't think it's subjective, though, because sports is, like, all statistical based. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think there are people who are undeniably in this Mount Rushmore at minimum. You know what I'm saying? Uh, is there a definitive great? Maybe. Mm. You know what I'm saying? The, the general consensus seems to be either LeBron or Mike. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, 
I guess what are the determining factors of that? Is it championships? Is it ability? Is it talent? Is it no. skill? You know what I'm saying? Is it, you know, the killer instinct? You know what I mean? Like, no. those all play into it. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, I guess you like who you like, and you don't ride who, who you ride. Right, man. right, right. You gonna stick beside him. You know what I'm saying? You gonna stick yo, beside him. Yo. <laughs> I learned something on this episode, man. Number one thing I learned, man: don't get drunk before you go play basketball. Probably not the best idea. Yeah, because I'm I'm not buying that flu story at all. I'm on that. I'm leaning in on that one. The flu, my boy. Four quarters. <laughs> What they giving this nigga on the side? Like, they, they like, uh, extra strength, Roman testing? Peter Light. Peter Light. Like, oh, Peter Light like got done. Peter Light, like, bro. Man, that nigga would have had a hangover, man. I can't even say a hangover. He didn't even go to sleep. It, this man coming from a party. I like how you speaking like you know. Like, it's like, this is exactly what happened. Hey, man. He was still out the club. That man, <laughs> nah, you know, he was at Magic House by then, leaving oh, Magic yeah, House. Okay, you know, they went to the after party. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's. Even if it, it didn't happen like that, it's funny like that in my head. It's funny like that. Yeah. It, does, it does make it funnier, and to, to be honest, it's a more interesting story. You know what I mean? Way like, more. If we making a movie, if I'm making a movie, I'm making it that he got drunk. Yeah. I ain't that he got the flu, but, you know. In this story with Dennis Robbins <laughs> off a stripper's booty is funny, dog. That's gold right there, man. I'm giving y'all life this episode. Stop playing with me. <laughs> On my birthday. Big 39. What's happening? Big dog. Hey, man. What you got coming up, bro? That you can, like, that you can tell us about? Um, This year, I got, well, go watch VMF Season 2. Uh, and this year, I got Praises coming up. So, okay. Tell, um, tell what what that's about. Praise This is... It's about, how can I explain it? It's about uh, a girl from L.A. who is living the wrong way. That, you know, gets sent to live with her family in Atlanta. Mm. And that family happens to be a God-fearing family. And she ends up joining this praise team that they sing in competition. She's okay. a singer. And the journey that ensues off of doing that. Mm. Damn, that's dope, man. Yeah, man. I think I think it has a positive message. It's got a dope cast. Uh, it's, 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 I think it's gonna be a fun one, a nice and a, a fun watch with a, a family. Nah, facts, 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 man. Sure. What you think about before we go, bro? What you think about all this uh this stuff in the news, man? They talking about Offset and Quavo beefing, man. Got into a fight at the award show and all that. I think uh, uh, one, nobody wins when the family feuds. You know what I mean. And two, it's they family. So I know I know how how uh, you know those things go with family. I could fight my brother all day, mm. but I still love him. Right. You know what I mean. And I think you know that I think they're dealing with something very heavy. That you know, tempers flare, man. It's emotional. Yo. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, they lost their brother. No. You know what I mean? So, I think I think it's easy to talk about from the outside, but we really don't know. We don't know what's going on. We don't know how they feel. Right. We don't know what they're dealing with. We don't know what conversations they had. Yeah. You know no. what I'm saying? I just, for them, I hope that it all gets settled. I hope they find peace. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's a tough situation, man. It's a tough situation, and... I don't feel like it's my place to even speak on it. Yeah, I don't know why right. the news is speaking on it. Like, I, that's that's one of my biggest things. Is like, people are so quick to have opinions about things they don't know. Mm. So much goes on behind the scenes that we have no clue about. Right. You know what I mean? And I think people are so much more invested in the drama of it rather than the humanity of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. these people are dealing with something. I don't know how I feel if I lost my best friend, my brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. That's a lot. It's a lot. And it's someone that you came up with, you succeeded with, you changed your life with. And he ain't even doing that. 
You know what I mean? Mm. It's not like he was in trouble or having problems with someone. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't know. I think my thought on that situation is that I hope everybody gets better. I hope everybody finds peace. And I hope they find some way to reconvene because I don't know what happened backstage. I wasn't there. And I don't know what's happening between them because I'm not there. For a fact. And rest in peace to take out, man. Facts, man. Rest in peace, Facts. man. Cause you know I don't ever want to see you know what I'm saying people lose somebody then you know the family like beefing or whatever you know what I'm saying I just pray like I'm like you bro I just pray for peace mm-hmm. on both of that end man mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying because at the end of the day dog we only got one life to live and we can't be like just only one falling out with our people man over things like over nonsense, whatever the reason they fell out with, I'm quite sure they they got they valid reasons. Mm-hmm. I ain't talking about them, I'm talking about like in general. Mm-hmm. Cause I don't know why them guys fell out. Mm-hmm. All I just hear is rumors. You right. know what I'm saying? But yeah, rest in peace, dog. Fact. Uh, I appreciate you coming by here, man, and kicking with me, man. <laughs> you ever you ever been tempted to change your phone number? Nah, not yet. <laughs> I ain't saying that day ain't gonna come, but not man. yet. Oh man. I don't give out my number like that though. Right. I ain't I ain't happy go lucky with that, yo. Mm. Nah, I feel you on that, bro. I feel you, man. Uh let them let the let the people know where they can find you at, man. Sometimes people are like, oh, what's his IG? Let them know where they can find All you right, at, dog. Uh, you can find me at Rafi So Dope. R A F I S O D O P E on Instagram. Um, if you want to follow my behind the scenes photography journey, it's views from set. Um, and I have a, th- a third page. This is general artistry at a so dope story. And, um, that's really, that's the main ones right there. Raphael Castillo actor on Facebook. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's about it, man. And, uh, yeah, man, we finna be about this thing, man. Yes, sir. Hey, big salute to everybody watching over there on YouTube. Big salute to everybody listening on Spotify, uh, Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you're listening to this at, man. Without y'all, there will be no us. And always remember, when you do what you do, do it like you're doing it for TV. And we go, you bitch. Yeah,